Today is the Communist May Day, and Occupy Wall Street is out in full force. Um, there are protests now in 135 U.S. cities. Demonstrations are taking place all over New York City. Uh, joining us from the Mercury New York studios is Buck Sexton. He's our national security editor for The Blaze. He also has the new book out, Occupy, American Spring, well worth the read. Buck, um, you were out. One of our producers got hit with a garbage can today. Is he all right? He's okay. I was a, a few yards behind him when that happened. Uh, I decided that today, uh, because there was so much going on, Glenn, there were so many, some of them very small, some of them involving hundreds or even a few thousand people around the city, that I wanted to find the sort of the core element of, of anarchists that have attached themselves to this protest as really a, a primary part of it in terms of the, the destruction and really getting the headlines. So I found the black block, um, as did some of the producers from GVTV today. Um, I got a tip about it and our paths crossed. Uh, essentially, they were they had gathered on the Lower East Side. Um, there were maybe three or four hundred of them, I'd say. Uh, they had horrifically vulgar, uh, gross signs up. Uh, these guys are very serious, Glenn. I mean, they there's rage in their faces. Uh, and, these are the these are the hardcore anarchists. These are the, the these these are the guys you just don't trifle with. Um, you know, as as bad as some of the Occupy Wall Street people can be, they're not the black block. Um, they are. Um, uh, can we show any of the signs? Did we blur any of them out? Show some of these signs, um, because these are truly shocking. Yeah. How about that one? Yeah. Um, try the. I mean, who makes that sign? Kill capitalism, save the world. I mean, Glenn. These. Uh, oh, there's another one. I mean, what? Uh, I don't even understand that one. Yeah, so the, a lot of them are nonsensical. The, the point of it is just to whip people up into a frenzy of absolute rage. Uh, and you can see some of these individuals, they're obviously they're covering their faces. Um, they are very combative against the police. Uh, they were running, or they're running amok. They ran, uh, ran around in Chinatown. They were frightening um, elderly people left and right uh, that were living there. Uh, it was just really a, a scene of rampage in, in lower Manhattan. And I have to say, you know, these are individuals who are sort of loosely affiliated with the same movement, for sure, as those individuals in Cleveland who have been arrested on suspicion of trying to blow up a, a four-lane bridge there. So they want to destroy. They want to undermine the state. They want to bring the whole system down. These are not people that want to talk about uh, bank reform and, and changing the system to even out inequality a little bit. So where is anybody on this one, Buck? I mean, where's, where's the media on these? Where is, where is the unbelievable um, ringer that they put the Tea Party through? Where's the DOJ on these people? Well, you know, the media is trying really hard to separate out this group from the rest of Occupy. But, of course, that doesn't work very well because this group sees themselves as an absolutely essential component of Occupy. They see themselves as sort of, I call them the Hezbollah, the hippies. But really, I mean, they are the vanguard. They are the, the violent uh, forefront of this movement. And they work and I, together. This is, the, you know what this is? This is the Weather Underground arm from the 1960s. And they, and they work together. These guys will kill. They will blow things up. Any doubt in your mind? Uh, there are elements of th that certainly are willing to be violent. Yeah, we've seen that. I mean, th there's a plot that they believe they just uh, stopped that would bring down a bridge. So clearly there are possibly violent elements in this movement here in New York. There are definitely violent elements elsewhere in the Occupy anarchist sects elsewhere in the country. Um, and I just think that this is something people need to see because, Glenn, right now, in Union Square, there are thousands and thousands of occupiers. The square is absolutely packed. It is full. And there are some of these individuals there, but there's also a lot of the unions. There were, as I said, uh, and I talked about this last week when, when Occupy American Spring came out, there's basically the family-friendly side of Occupy, if you will, or the camera-ready side, which we saw in Bryant Park this morning. We saw it in Union Square today. And then there's these sort of direct action anarchist cells. These are the people that are getting that, that should be getting more attention in the press, but they recognize that they view their job as undermining the state and largely doing that by undermining the police, by undermining their authority, and causing these street battles essentially with them. Okay, I'm concerned that we had, I think, providential rain this morning, which kept the numbers down during the day. But Black Block, they're not daytime people anyway. I mean, these are the people that once it starts to get dark and crazy, uh, they get dark and crazy. 
Uh, Glenn, I spoke to some of my sources today actually around Union Square, uh, people that I know who are covering the movement or, or involved in making sure the movement doesn't get out of control. Um, and they said that they think tonight is when things actually might get particularly uh, interesting, if you will. They think that there's what they're calling an after party, after Occupy marches from Union Square in the thousands, by the way. I mean, they are literally, Union Square right now, which is a huge area of New York City, you're is looking at it, by the way, people. You're looking at a live, this is a live feed from, um, um, from Union Square here. Yeah. And, and you're seeing that this is what he's talking about now. Yeah, I knew that it was going to start off slow. Uh, this, this was clear, and we, we talked about this with the GBTV team. And uh, as the day goes on, people get more amped up. Right now, they're being, I mean, there's, there's Soviet flags flying around Union Square. There's all kinds of crazy stuff. It looks like sort of some weird leftist carnival. But as the day drags on, a few arrests become more arrests. People become more sort of enraged against the state or capitalism or racism, whatever the case may be. And tonight, after they have that march, after they've finished and find themselves at Wall Street, there's going to be this huge group of people that are looking to make a statement. So I wouldn't advise anybody in Manhattan to go for a stroll around Wall Street tonight, that, well, other than me, that much, I'm sure. Of. Okay, we have a video of them vandalizing a bank in Midtown. Can we play that? Um, video um, and this is happening what have you heard about the Black Panthers in Los Angeles I mean this is this is just there's the vandalization here um, what have you heard about the um, the Occupy protest in other places other than New York and more and more reports are coming in about vandalism. Um, I know that traffic has been blocked in San Francisco, uh, and, and quite honestly, it, it's just really getting going now, I think. More of the reporting is coming in in a lot of these places because they want to set it up so that you have your critical mass of sort of occupiers uh, all in one place. And then as the movement gets going and as it's louder and the bongo drums keep going and everything else, as the sun goes down, then you can really see some activity that's nefarious. Then you can actually see people have these sort of small-scale riots uh, because it's much harder for the police to keep tabs on these people. Um, you know, the NYPD was, was along with them almost every step of the way today. At night, that becomes a much more difficult proposition. I have to say, I recognize some faces in the anarchist movement from the Zuccotti clear-out night. So these are people that, you know, they, they've, they're dedicated. They were there before. They are back now. They are not backing down. Um, they think that this is their movement, move, uh, movement today, and they really believe they're gaining tremendous ground. And it's a momentum issue. It's not about, people have been asking me how successful is today. They've made the statement. The question is how big the statement's going to be, but I think they do have the momentum they need going forward to get the kind of attention and affect the political message in this country the way they want to. Yeah, you know, remember, uh, I would think I was one of the only broadcasters on television that was not mocking Occupy Wall Street after that first weekend last uh, last year it was i expected big things it turned out to be very little and i said don't mock don't mock them don't laugh at them don't dismiss them they will continue to build steam this is day one of this movement um, you know I, I read a few sites today that were saying that you know this is a this is a thirty day movement just for may day this is the kickoff am, am i wrong this is the kickoff of what's coming all summer Look, this, this, everything today so far ha on the occupier side has been very well planned, very well coordinated. They know exactly what they're doing. Um, you know, the, the black bloc dispersed very quickly, I have to say, once the police finally got a hold and got a round of them at one point. So, yes, I think that they're going to continue on with this. And, Glenn, on the first day, as you said, you took them seriously. They were saying, this is just a practice. We are just establishing the beachhead. This is the beginning of a much broader, longer-term movement to really shape the discourse in this country, for some of them to completely change this country, I mean, to, to bring about revolution. Um, but they absolutely view this in a longer-term sense, and I think that today is the start of more of these kind of activities. The weather is warm. They're together. They're digitally organized. They know what they're doing. What, uh, what should the president and the DOJ be doing? I think it's, the president should speak out and say that this is absolutely, that this is not protest. This is beyond that. And that, you know, the First Amendment doesn't mean that you get to frighten people, you get to block traffic, you get to destroy private property. Um, I think that there's certainly, there's a need for that. The fact that that has not happened. And quite, and quite honestly, Glenn, the opposite has happened. We've seen the White House essentially appropriate the class warfare rhetoric oh, yeah. that has been absolutely a centerpiece of this movement. So it's not going to happen, unfortunately. I think we well, know I think that. It, I think it will, but it will only happen when it's politically expedient and the people start to rise up, and then he'll look like the savior coming in 
on the white horse, um, but it will be empty rhetoric because he's the one stirring the pot. Buck, thank you very much. In the name of the book, you can get it, you can download it. It's an e-book. You can download it now. Occupy American Spring. Grab it, read it. You need to know about this movement. Back in a minute.